Hey guys, this is Victor, the Wise Traditions Nutritionist from Vitagenics. And today I want to speak to you about something a bit controversial, and that is breast cancer and actually how to make your breasts uh, more beautiful or better, healthier really, to remove any kind of lumps, whether it's cancerous, precancerous, cysts, etc. And we're going to talk about that a lot. So this is, uh, I titled this Mammary Madness because there's a lot of crazy stuff out there. Uh, and I want to tackle the truth and fiction behind breast cancer. So moving on, the first thing, just stop getting breast exams. Even self-exams, there's really no meaning. It does not help you. It only increases your risk. And I know that might sound crazy, but that is exactly what the numbers tell us. Women who have regular mammograms are more likely to die of breast cancer. Shocking, but true. And furthermore, you might find the cancer sooner, but the women are still going to die because our modern uh, technologies, our modern treatments, or really our conventional treatment, does not help. And I'm speaking about chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. These things do not help. They do more harm than good. There are a lot of things that do help that are actually more modern. So let's talk a little bit more about that. And now this is a very strong statement, of course. I'm saying that, wow, you're more likely to die of breast cancer if you get a mammogram. And that sounds shocking. But why is that? Why am I saying that? Well, simply, mammograms expose you to more unnecessary radiation on top of everything else, all the radiation we're getting elsewhere. And worse than that, the real problem is that these mammograms are physically traumatic. They really put a lot of pressure on the breast, and this is something that you do not want to do. So even self-exams are doing the same thing if you're doing it in a physically traumatic manner, which is normally how people are guided to do them. And the thing is, is that any kind of manipulation, biopsies, you know, cutting, sticking needles into it, the surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, all of these things increase cancer growth and increase the likelihood of spreading. They are not good options for you. They're, they're not helping. They're doing more harm than good. And again, the, the ironic thing here is that all of the conventional doctors know that you should never disturb a cancerous tumor. And yet they are promoting the disturbance of these potential breast tumors. So, you know, there's a huge contradiction right there. And there are a lot of studies that will show you the statistics. Okay, so... Again, I make another strong statement here. It's actually not even my statement. These are not my words, okay? So these are other doctors that I am quoting and talking about how that even if you do find the cancer early, if you're using conventional treatment, you're still going to be more likely to die. It is not helping you. And you, you've got to look at the long-term mortality rates. You'll see a lot of things talking about the five-year mortality rates it's not relevant. You you don't you get a prognosis and they tell you, okay, look, we do this and you've got a good chance to live five years. No, don't do it. And then you've got a better chance to live a full and productive and healthy lifestyle, a uh, life. Okay, so you want to live a full life. Stay away from these uh, conventional treatments. And uh, again, that's chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. No. So let's talk about stopping cancer, reducing your risk for cancer, and actually making breasts more beautiful or feeling more beautiful, meaning getting rid of all the lumps and stuff. Now, if we look at statistics a while back, a couple of decades ago, Americans had 10 times the cancer rate of Japanese. And this is looking at breast cancer specifically among women. Other cancers, that difference is not like that, but it's extreme when you compare Japanese women to American women. Now, interestingly, if we look at those statistics now, it's only five times, okay? So Americans have five times more because the breast cancer rates among Japanese women are rising. Why are they rising? Because their diet 
is changing, being influenced by the Western American diet or the standard American diet. And studies show us clearly that breast cancer victims have deficiencies in iodine. So this is your first big key. If your iodine is up, your risk for cancer goes down. You really need to make sure you have enough iodine in your diet. Selenium is another key mineral that we need and that is found to be deficient. And then vitamin B1. These are the three most significant things that we find connected to breast cancer and other breast issues. So let's take a closer look at these. When, when we look at these uh, nutrients that we need, iodine alone has been shown to shrink all kinds of lumps, cysts, tumors, fibroids, and cancerous or malignant tumors. Uh, iodine is amazing. And again, you see this when you see the women with breast cancer, they have significant iodine deficiencies. So get your iodine up. Okay, and then the combination, the selenium and the B1 with the iodine, those things are being used and have been used successfully by many doctors. Search the internet. You will find doctors and you will find patients, even people doing their own self-care, explaining to you, showing you, telling you how they eliminated, you know, all these different kinds of lumps in their breasts. So it's real, it's been happening for a long time, we know it. We have animal studies that show it absolutely clearly. Of course, you don't have many human studies because drug companies have no interest in funding these kinds of trials. But the information is out there for you to confirm on your own. So definitely please do that. Now for iodine, there are some easy solutions. Um, Lugol's solution is a very, very common uh, liquid that we can take in many different ways. And it's not so expensive. It's easy to take. You can actually rub it into your skin or you take it with some water and apple cider vinegar. It's a, a superb way to get your iodine levels up. If you can get or you like to eat seaweed and kelp, that also has a lot of iodine. There are other things out there too. Salt is important also for your body to use iodine. So make sure that you have enough salt in your diet. And I'm not talking about iodized salt, no. Get the good healthy sea salts, okay? The Celtic sea salt, Himalayan pink salt, etc. cetera. Uh, and have that also, make sure you have enough of that in your diet. Now for the selenium, mustard seed is a really nice spice that has a lot of the selenium in it. And then Brazil nuts are great also. Your fish, your meat, your eggs, it really depends a lot on the quality of them and they still won't have as much uh, as Brazil nuts and selenium. But those are a few different sources for your selenium. And about B1, I just recently did a video on that. So definitely take a look at my video on uh, getting your vitamin B1, your thiamine. All right, so those are some just quick hints on how to get these things into your diet if you suspect you've got issues with your breast. Now, I want to talk a bit about vitamin K2, vitamin D, boron, and magnesium because these are also key and these are specifically important for calcification of the breast. This is another issue uh, that women could have with breasts, which also can sometimes lead to uh, cancerous tumors. So we want to reduce the calcification or microcalcification or just prevent it. And the thing is, if you're having calcification in the breast, that means there's a greater chance you have calcification of your arteries, which you know uh, leads to heart disease and all kinds of other issues. And these are the vitamins and minerals that are really important for those things. Your K2, your D3, your boron, and your magnesium. So you, again, you want to make sure you have these things, enough of these things in your diet. And it's really not so difficult. You just need to eat a natural, healthy diet. Um, I always talk about the Western Price Diet Guidance because that's really the best thing. Now, moving ahead, there's another factor I want to talk about, and that is genetics. Now, I'm showing a picture of Angelina Jolie here, who I respect immensely. 
uh, for all of her great work that she does in the world. I'm not talking about her movie career. She's just a, a magnificent per person all around. However, um, she has recently removed her breasts because of her fear of genetic factors with regards to breast cancer. And this is not something you should worry about. It's not about the genetics, your genetics, your DNA. They are not your fate. It is diet and lifestyle that control the DNA. It is all about epigenetics now. We know this, okay? It's not as mainstream, so a lot of people are still clinging on to this old thing about the DNA, and there's a lot of fear-mongering. But no, don't worry about that, okay? You just, you eat right, you change your lifestyle, and then that turns off those potential bad switches in your DNA. Okay, so... Uh, to recap a little bit, I want to again just mention about the nutrition. These are really the key things for keeping your breast cancer-free, healthier, smoother, etc. And uh, follow a Western A. Price dietary guide uh, to help you figure out what you should eat. And it's really simple. There's nothing complicated or specific. Everybody's a little different, you know, depending on your environmental factors uh, and your genetic factors, too. They they impact uh, how much of different things you need to eat. And so I'm not talking about a specific diet. This is just guidance. Basically, stay away from processed foods. Try to get really healthy pastured meats, you know, organic, fresh, natural vegetables, etc. All right. And then I must make one more comment here. I'm talking about breast cancer. I must mention pink ribbon. Pink ribbon is a scam. And don't listen to me. Go out on the internet. You'll find tons of people talking about this. It's, you know, most of the funding does not go to cancer research. Um, and, and that's not helpful anyway. We don't need uh, new drugs and things. You just eat natural and then you won't get cancer. But with, again, with regards to Pink Ribbon, please do your research and you will find endless amounts of information on the horrible statistics behind Pink Ribbon and the fact that, uh, yeah, it's just a money-making scam. Okay, so again, I hope this is helpful for you. I hope it points you in the right direction to help you deal with whatever might be bothering your breasts. It's not just for women. Uh, you know, men can get breast cancer too. Men can have these issues. And even though it's a much smaller percentage, uh, and so I'm not really just targeting women here. So do the research. Don't trust what I say. You know, go out there and just look. I'm hoping to point you in the right direction. I hope you find this helpful. Thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe and uh, have a nice day.